identifying organic compounds uh, is a sneaky name for identifying all kinds of compounds like inorganic compounds and molecular versus ionic compounds. So we're doing a bit of review as well. So remember, we defined an ionic compound as being formed between a cation and anion. OK, so cation and anion. And usually that is going to be the cation is coming from a metal and the anion is coming from one or more non-metals. Because remember um, that we can have monoatomic monoatomic anions like oxide or sulfide and we also have a plethora of polyatomic anions like nitrate or sulfate or whatever okay so but ionic compounds defined as electrostatic attraction between a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion your dead giveaway is if there's a metal and a non-metal in there it's going to be ionic one notable exception is ammonium as a cation so for instance ammonium nitrate would be nh4 no3 that's ionic, right? It's two polyatomic ions. Okay, so then a molecular compound is formed by sharing of electrons, and this is between non-metals and other non-metals. So if you see just all non-metals together, can be two, could be if it's binary, it could be many. Okay, <laughs> uh, that would be defined as a molecular compound. Okay, so. Within molecular compounds, there are some subgroups. OK, so we'll go big to small. OK, so organic contains hydrogen and oxygen. Sorry, carbon and hydrogen. Sorry. Organic always contains carbon and hydrogen. Can also contain other stuff. So this is like the, the big group. OK, other stuff is known as heteroatoms. How fun is that? Um, Bonding in organic compounds is always going to be molecular covalent bonding. OK, a subset of organic compounds is hydrocarbons, which only contain carbon and hydrogen, only carbon and hydrogen. Um, so when we are going to call something uh, inorganic, it means it doesn't fit the definition of being organic. So if it doesn't contain carbon and hydrogen, it has to be inorganic. So inorganic <laughs> doesn't contain both carbon and hydrogen. So that means you can have an inorganic uh, compound that contains just carbon or just hydrogen, right? But doesn't have both of them, okay? Inorganic compounds are gonna tend to be ionic, right? Okay, so let's go through and do some categorizing. Checky, 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 checky. What have we got? SF4, so that is sulfur a non-metal, fluorine, also a non-metal. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it is going to be a molecular compound. OK, so joined together with covalent bonds. It is not organic because there's no carbons and hydrogens. OK, and um, if it's not organic, it can't be a hydrocarbon. OK, uh, I would say it would count as an inorganic substance, right? No carbons, no hydrogens. So those would be all the ones that apply to sulfur tetrafluoride. What about this guy? CH3, CH2OH. So first of all, all non-metals can't be ionic, has to be molecular. Does it contain carbons and hydrogens? Yes, got to be organic okay is it a hydrocarbon no because it's got an oxygen hiding in there okay so hydrocarbon is a very narrow subgroup of organic compounds okay which only contain carbon and hydrogen so that's all i'm going to click for that one i've had some great questions about like well is it ionic because there's a hydroxide in it no. OK, so we'll get on to this a little, little bit later when we talk about um, different types of covalent bonds. Um, short answer, some covalent bonds share electrons more equally than others. OK, so this would be an example of a covalent bond, which we call polar, because there is a slight separation of charge between the oxygen and the hydrogen. OK, uh, which means essentially during reactions, it can be more easily separated. It's the same explanation for like oxy acids and stuff or, or just binary acids where we got the hydrogen written on the front like is it an h plus cation does that make it ionic no it doesn't it's still bonded covalently however when that h plus cation is removed or is lost from the acid then it is an ion but it was not bonded ionically in the first place right so i know some of you are thinking about these things so lastly ch2 ch2 no metals hiding in there, so I'm going to confidently, well, 
<laughs> as confident as you could ever be, click that it is molecular. Okay, definitely not ionic. Um, and is it organic? Yes, it's only got carbons and hydrogens in it. Is it a hydrocarbon? Yes, it's a hydrocarbon, right? Because it only has carbons and hydrogen. How boring. Okay, should we look at some more? I guess we can do, right? So I don't want to delete my stuff because I don't want to write all that stuff out again. Okay, I'm just going to do a sneaky erase. Okay. <laughs> all right, so silver nitrate. The dead giveaway here is we have a metal, silver, okay, and non-metals, nitrogen, oxygen. So that has got to be an ionic compound. So just as a little reminder with ionic compounds, that cation would be AG superscript plus, because silver always is a plus one charge. And the nitrate is a polyatomic iron NO subscript three subscript minus one charge. Okay, so to form an electrically neutral compound, we're going to need one silver cation and one nitrate anion and that is why the formula is silver nitrate like that okay so it's ionic it doesn't contain carbons and hydrogen so it's not organic it has to be inorganic inorganic is literally just not organic okay so like if you're not checking that organic box you've got to check the inorganic box okay All right, what about this bad boy here hch3 ch2 Ooh, that's acetic acid um and we see the structural formula written lots of different ways to try and show you uh, how it's put together. Quite often that H will be put on the end here because uh, that's actually the position it's in. Uh, but this has been written in a more inorganic kind of style to give you like the heads up that this guy right here is going to be lost as an H plus cation when it reacts. Um, but the bonding in this acid is still going to be molecular look it's all non-metal so if you're ever like ooh confused about that um like with the h plus and the oh minus being like part of a bigger structure and you know it can go on and react and liberate those ions just go back to the very simple definition of if something's molecular it's all just non-metals hydrogen is not a metal okay i know it sits there on the top of group one but it's definitely a non-metal okay so non-metal non-metal all non-metals so we are going to tick the molecular box is it organic well i see a carbon i see a hydrogen so i'm going to click check for organic uh is it a hydrocarbon um no because there's oxygen in there isn't there okay all right and then last we've got ammonia all right nitrogen non-metal hydrogen non-metal so we're going to go with molecular right non-metals together um is it organic no because it doesn't have any carbons in it so we're going to click the inorganic box okay so i think we've met quite a variety of compounds there so um yeah if you've got any questions you know where to find me